we we'll look at the different stages of a development life cycle now. Okay, so these can be basically broken down into six to eight stages. I'll tell you why it's six to eight. First, let's look at the stages. Project initiation and feasibility, investigation and analysis, design, implementation, testing, and maintenance. Okay, so these are the eight, six to eight stages that each development life cycle um, follows. <clears throat> the way it's done will vary, as you've seen in um, the spiral model and the waterfall, but these are the main stages that most um, typical um, development life cycles would consist of. Now, the reason I've said six to eight is because project initiation and feasibility, they can be done together because they're quite similar to each other, so they can be done together. Same with investigation and analysis. So you investigate and anal ana analyze what you've investigated at the same time. So whether you want to do it at si eight stages, whether you'd want to do it at six, well, that's depending on the development, not the uh, methodology you choose to follow. Okay, so let's look at project initiation. What happens here? Okay, clearly, obviously, this is where you start the project. So you first, you find out, you meet up with the client, see what they require and what they expect the outcome to be. So this is where you define the objectives. Okay, what is the purpose? So what, what is the purpose of you doing a system ana analysis for this user? Okay, so these are all in the project initiation. It's very brief. It's not. Uh, it's nothing long-winded where you have to write pages and pages of documents. It's just brief, simple. Define the objectives and define the purpose of this project. Okay, so once you've done that, you do the feasibility. So the feasibility is where you find out whether this project is likely to succeed or not. <coughs> okay, so you need to find out whether by doing this project it will be successful, what exactly is required, what um, exactly you need to do, if the objectives that the user is um, outlined are uh, obtainable or not. Okay, you look at the strengths and weaknesses, not of the new system that you're going to create, but the strengths and the weaknesses of the existing system. Remember, with systems analysis, you don't always have to create a new system. You don't have to have complete, create a completely new one from scratch. Sometimes there's strengths of the existing system. So there might be some parts or some areas of the existing system that are working very well. You might want to keep those um, strengths. Okay? Uh, weak, uh, weaknesses, obviously, you're going to highlight because they're the ones that you're going to change. But the strengths of the new system, or the, sorry, existing system, you need to look at whether you want to keep them or not. Okay, you're also going to look at the costs, the hardware and the software. So, firstly, look at the existing cost and how much it's costing you. And obviously, if you're going to create a new system, what hardware you'll require, what software, and how much in, together that will cost. So, that's what you look at in feasibility. In feasibility also you look at the scope so this is um, something we'll look at later on but that's covered in the feasibility next thing <coughs> is the investigation now investigation clearly um, this is where you investigate the problems okay? what you do is look at similar systems similar systems to the one that you already got that are out there okay and if uh, what's wrong and you find out the strengths and weaknesses of those systems and you can also, by looking at, investigate the current system by doing observations, interviews, questionnaires, okay, things like that. Okay, but what you need to do, um, you can do data analysis as well, or document analysis. This is basically looking at the current documents, the current um, data that is being used by that organization. And what you can do based on that is inspect if something's going wrong there. And that's what they need to improve. Okay. Okay, and also you can obtain factual information from uh, document analysis. Okay, so you can see the procedures, how they store things, how in, the inputs and outputs of the system. They can do this all in the investigation. So in, most of your time will be taken on this investigation part. Okay, data flow diagrams. Okay, inputs and outputs. So you need to look at, you need to create for the existing system. You need to find out how the data flows from one end to another. Okay, so you can see all the inputs and outputs as well. Okay, analysis. This is once you've investigated, you ana firstly analyze the end user needs, and then you look deeper into the system. So now that you've investigated all these, you've got the observation records, you've got the interviews, you've got the questionnaires, you can um, analyze these and look deeper into the existing system, and then you can suggest alternative solutions. So this is where you t this is the part where you tell the user, 
okay, this is what I suggest to you. You create a new system or you adapt the existing one. Okay, design and implementation, once again, design, what, you have to clearly highlight what the system needs. Okay, produce a technical, a technical documentation. Now, this technical documentation would include basically different types of tools. You will need to use the tools and techniques that you've learned throughout this unit. So things that you will need to look at are ERDs, data dictionaries, logical uh, data flow diagrams, process descriptors, screen designs, report layouts, all these things that we're going to cover on a bit later on will be required in the technical documentation. Okay, uh, alternative solution designs. Okay, you, can, you need to create alternative designs. So let's just say you d you're creating a website for them. You still have to create an alternative website, so different looks just in case the user doesn't like one um, design over another. Also, you need to create alternative solution. So just say the user does not want a website. You'll have to create them something else. It could be a spreadsheet, it could be a database, it could be um, anything. Okay, so you need to have in your design, you have to have alternative designs, not just designs, but solutions as well. Okay, implementation. This is where you create the actual system. So during this stage is where you create the system. We've looked at it already when briefly when we did our um, group work at the start of the unit. Okay, this is where you create the actual system or okay. Um, you need to create a test plan as well because the person the next stage is testing and for the person the person to do testing they need to know what needs to be tested. The only person that knows what needs to be tested is the person or the people that did the implementation because they're the ones that created the system they know what they created what they did so that what um, so that needs to be tested and that needs to be a test plan needs to be created by the per, by the team that is doing the implementation okay staff training needs to be implemented as well okay if you're going to be creating a new system your staff are obviously not going to know or may not know how to use the new system so you need to have some sort of staff training in place or whether you're creating training videos or tutorials on how to use or how yeah, how to use this new system. Okay, testing and maintenance. Okay, testing is probably going to take you the most amount of time. Okay, because you have to test against the requirements and obviously the test plan that's being created to, for you by the te implementation team. Okay, as I've said, it consumes a lot of amount of time. There's two types of testing: there's black box test, black box testing, and white box testing. Black box testing, what that does is you look at the functionality of the actual created system. So you look at how it works and you test it against how it works. White box testing tests against any codes, any formulas, any uh, things like that. So it tests the code part of the program. So if you, if you want to look at it another way, black box testing tests the outside of the system, whereas white box testing tests the insides. Okay, so what's behind the interface? Okay, maintenance. Okay, so in main, during maintenance, any errors that you get in your testing, you correct them. You also maintain the system, so you check that the system is working correctly. You may not do this um, every time, but you might do it once a month to see what improvements need to make, so you can do an update or what needs to be improved. So you also look for future development. So by doing this maintenance every month, you can see how the new system that you've created is working so for future reference or for future plans if you want to upgrade or update the system you know what's required okay so that's the different stages of a development life cycle